All right, so we're here inside of our Shulk 20. Again, let's make some render nodes. You know what? You can already maybe copy over these render nodes from these other things. So we're going to have caramel and we're going to have cookie. Like there's a lot of stuff we can just copy over. All right, so cookie already recognizes that it's cookie and flip. We're going to load it this thing in. Right, so, and on this cookie, let's again, yeah, we already have these displacement settings correct, so that should be fine. So some other stuff that we can copy over. Let's go over here. Let's grab our cookie and let's grab our caramel. Go to material, let's paste. Oh, and I, yeah, let's... Organize those. Let's go here to this thing. Let's go out. Let's grab our crops. You see the nice thing in Houdini is you can reuse all of this stuff. Also your render settings, all of the stuff. All right. And I guess we can maybe even copy our lights. We need to reposition these lights, but in terms of general settings, they should be pretty good to go. All right. So we have some basic stuff going on here so yeah i guess let's um yeah let's start applying these materials so i guess cookie let's go Whoop. cookie is already applied but just to make sure let's go here caramel let's right so that's it's working um yeah i guess let's just fire up the ipr and see what we're what we have so far Alright, so let's go to make to make a rich render view. Let's press render. Because they are called R and R, they should be picked up automatically. They are. Our camera is not, so we need to select our proper camera. Alright, so our colors look way weird it's because probably our again our uh let's just put this to uh 709 so it, you can see it already actually looks pretty good uh probably what we want to do is on this light dome let's enable the background again so we kind of have a little bit better of an idea what we're dealing with So, so I'm probably going to turn down the displacement on this cookie a little bit. Let's, uh, All right. Let's turn that off. I'm just super annoyed always by this stuff just turning off for some reason. Uh, but yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, I probably want to change the material for the caramel a little bit here. Because I'm not completely happy with the way this, this looks. Uh, or maybe it's mainly the lighting. So let's change the lighting up a little bit, I guess. So let's go to our other camera, cam one. All right, so this one looks pretty good. That's this one. I guess we could maybe move it a little bit. And we can maybe change the intensity a little bit. So that looks cool. So that's also what we have here, but we also have it on the other side. Let's probably want a second rim light on the side there. And I think we need to reload. Yep. 
Let's move it up a little bit. Again, this is all not an exact science. So it's just a... Uh, Let's see, is it, I kind of feel like this light is not doing anything for some reason. We just have a look in the, let's try turning it off and on again. Okay, it is doing stuff, let's really crank it up. Okay, so it is working. Let's move it back to original position. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. Let's also make the other one a little bit smaller. Right, so move it back. And this light on the foreground here, because I don't really like that. I want I want some shadow in here. So we don't want as much light here in the foreground. So we have this light here, which is completely filling it up. So that's the fill that we had originally. Let's really turn that down. Put it to like one. Let's turn the light from our HDRI maybe completely off. Let's go. Let's turn on on our main IPR IPR sublevel mesh updates so that it will update when we scrub. So this key light. Let's see where we have the key lights. Uh, maybe we don't even need it in this case. Okay, we do. But we probably want to move it around a little bit, maybe. To something like this. Yeah, you can see now we get this sort of... Some nice shadowy stuff. On the... So where's our camera? Our camera's there. Oh, okay. I see what I'm doing wrong. I was... I was I have these I have these two lights here at the wrong side. Let's move them back. Let's rotate. That's why the rim was not looking the way I wanted to. But now let's grab this one. Fill light. Let's move it a little bit like that. Let's grab the key light. All right, so maybe this one, the fill light, let's put it over here. So that's going to be over there. Um, and again, like this whole stuff is not an exact science. And again, I am not a complete lighting expert. This is, there's people who know a lot more about lighting than me. But I'm just doing stuff that I think look pretty good. Right, so... Maybe we want to sort of rotate it slightly. To the side here. So we get these uh, shadows there. And then turn down our fill. And these, these rim lights, I'm not happy with the way that looks. I'm going to move those closer. Yeah, all right, so we're already getting a lot closer than what we had before. And again, right now, this is all going pretty fast. Uh, originally, it took me a lot longer, but we already have the look sort of figured out here, right? So it's going to be a lot faster. And actually, the caramel already looks pretty good. Uh, the main thing I don't really like in this case is the, um, the reflection there. So I think I'm going to change the material a little bit. I'm going to make it a little bit more rough. So, yeah, so we don't have the, uh, the super hard reflection there. And it's just... Just render. And let's turn off fill for now. Right, let's see what just our key light does. Let's just turn off all of our other lights. Uh, 
actually liking this pretty well, I think. So let's just make our key a little bit smaller in size. So we get some harder shadows. Now let's add our rim back in. Oh, we already have one rim added. Oh, that's the one. All right, let's add the other rim back in. Okay, so that one is too bright. Because like, let's see if I turn it off. By the way, you can snapshot with this thing here. Snap take snapshot. Let's just take snapshot. Because if we add it back in. And add another snapshot. You can see it's fills, it fills up too much. So let's turn it down. And let's see how much of a difference the fill thing makes. I don't think we even need this one. Okay, we do. Because it does add some stuff over here. All right, so let's just double check it with the uh, background. For some reason, it's not loading the background. Yeah, all right, so our HDRI was turned off, of course. All right, so, yeah, I mean, it's not exactly the same as that, but, and you can, by the way, all the stuff like depth of field, uh, we're going to do that in compositing. So that's why I'm not rendering that into the thing. Um, so motion blur is already turned on. You can see that right here. So I guess let's turn our background off again. Rip, backplate off. You can see how quick this went with the... Because uh, we already have these materials set up. Of course, with a real project, you're going to have your client bitching about everything in the meantime. So that's not going to go as fast. Uh, what we want to do on the caramel, uh, we have these, these velocity. We want to use deformation motion blur so that we get some motion blur on, uh, on the falling chocolate. So let's go step through the, step through a couple of these frames. So maybe it gets a little bit dark at the end. So let's just really quickly have a look at how we could solve that. Maybe you do want to increase a little bit and do a little bit more fill. And then maybe I do want a little bit more displacement on the cookie because it does look like a little, a little bit flat. So let's do 33. Well, in general, I'm pretty happy with it. You can see it renders quite fast. Actually, it renders a lot faster than my original scene because uh, it's always like if you if you keep working on stuff, you just keep adding stuff, and then after a while, your scene just gets way more heavy than it needs to be. All right, and here you can see something with the motion blur. We don't have enough samples to get clean motion blur. So this is where you would increase your main samples. So let's go in here. So let's snapshot. This is where this will could, so, uh, could uh, would come in. So I'm thinking min samples eight, max samples sixty four. Let's see what this looks like. So it's gonna that's gonna be a multiplier for all of the other samples. So it's gonna make it quite a bit slower. But we have a pretty fast render, so it shouldn't shouldn't matter that much. And a little bit of noise will still be fine because we're gonna be denoising. So you can see there's already a big difference. I'm thinking something like this should probably be good. Uh, and we have all of these passes, like normal pass and whatever to do uh, denoising. Let's look at GI. Uh, not actually a lot of GI because we have that many, that much subsurface scattering. Yeah, so I say looks pretty good. Let's render one frame. Oh, let's uh, configure the actual proper render settings, by the way. So again, there was 150 frames. You probably want to go in your animatic and just double check your in and out points to sort of know um, kind of like exact range that you need to render. 
So essentially what you would do is you would go into your edit, double click on this, then you can see I'm gonna scrub through this and you can see this sequence by endpoint will be on 42 frames. You probably wanna add some handle frames. So let's say start at frame 37 until frame 106. So let's say one, uh, let's say 111. So it's gonna be 37 till 111. So we could put it in here. So now we can be certain that if we then drop it in, it should be the correct size. Or you could just render the entire sequence and you could just replace it here. But again, that's gonna be more render time. So that probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, let's move along, I guess, to, uh, to the other shot. So we have uh, this thing, we have that one. Uh, oh, by the way, let's render one frame. And then I can also show you the sort of structure here. So let's just go in there. Let's press render. It's going to render in the meantime. And then we can go to the render folder because we already had previous one as well. As you can see shot 30 was the one we did just now. So you can see it created a uh, folder there. So if, we, if I open that, you can see. And the colors here look a little bit weird. That's because open color IO is not enabled in my uh, DJV player. Um, there we go. Shot 20. So right now it's empty, but that's rendering as you can see and you can see this also looks a little bit weird so if you put it to aces rec 709 if you want to enable aces again if you're putting in your environment file it will also be in there oh and i can what i can see here is my resolution is not correct so probably my camera resolution should be improved let's go to shot 30 let's put it to 1920 by 1080 and let's render again. And still not. So let me just double check with the. Oh, I think we changed it on the wrong camera. Yeah, we need to change it on this camera. Alright, run to disk. You can see now this is correct. It should still be pretty fast. I mean, we haven't really done anything that should make this super slow. So while well, this is rendering, uh, let's move on to the next shot. So I guess a good one maybe to do right now would be this one. So, so this is going to have some other interesting stuff because we do need to change the cookie material probably a little bit. And that's also going to be this shot. So these are two shots. So let's just go in there and then we can uh, work on those. <laughs> 